starting a new Parsha, Parsha Struma. Truma means contribution. Since the tabernacle was constructed from contributions made by the Jewish people, why is the Parsha about God's house named after man's contribution? Parsha speaks about God's house, a dwelling place for God, is called after the contribution. Truma. Hasidic thought teaches that God created the world because he had a plan. But the plan contains a clause. The plan is that God's presence should be revealed in the world. The clause is that this should occur by the efforts of man. So the plan is revelation of godliness in the world. The clause is the, um, the addendum to the contract is that it needs to be revealed by us. By us as Jews? Or by all men? By all men, but especially by Jews. By them, by doing the seven uh, Noahide laws, by us, uh, the s- 620 commandments. 613 biblical and seven rabbinical. I thought the 613 included the original seven. No, 620. 620 altogether. 613, we have uh, 248 positive commandments and 365 negative. And then we have seven rabbinical commandments like the mitzvah of Hanukkah, the mitzvah of Kiddush, the mitzvah of Tira Sedaim. All these are rabbinical. And together it's 620. And it's a uh, numerical value to Keter. Keter is 620. Tarach, Tarach, 620. So uh, at the uh, giving of the Torah, God stated his plan. He taught us that we can reveal his presence in the world by performing the mitzvahs. But at that moment, everything had come from God. With the construction, the time of the Matan Torah, everything was a revelation of godliness. God descended to Mount Sinai and revealed himself. With the construction of the tabernacle, God's clause began to be implemented. Now the Jews are getting involved. They are donating and contributing gold, silver, and copper, as we'll soon see in the Parsha. And labor. And labor. Now, men had made an effort to help God's plan reach fruition. It is for this reason that our Parsha, which speaks of God's house, is named after men's contribution. For God's house could, could only be complete when his clause for human involvement was adhered to. When we listen to it. A problem with this parsha is that it appears, at first glance, to be obsolete. The tabernacle was a temporary structure, was only in the desert, which was superseded by the temple in Yerushalayim. So why do we have to read about it at all? It was only for the time of the desert. They were traveling 40 years in the desert, and God commanded them to build this sanctuary. And after the, the Mikdash, today we don't have the yearning, the desire to build the, the Mishkan. We want to build the Mikdash, the temple. Even though in some places it says the Mishkan is the Mikdash. So it says the tabernacle possessed one advantage which the temple did not have. The uniqueness of the tabernacle is that it brought its contribution to the furthest of places, the desert. So we read Pasha Struma year after year to remind us of the need to bring Judaism to the most distant places. The same way that the tabernacle influenced even the desert. What is the desert represents? A place of darkness, there's no growth. Only as the Midrash says, Mokrim uh, of Nachash, so of the Akrov, that there's only uh, scorpions and snakes and serpents in the desert. And the, the tabernacle was there even to elevate that very place. It teaches us that we can, with our outreach, going out to the world, it can influence even the, low, uh, the lowest uh, of places. 
וידבר על דינו ומי שלמו דבר בני ישרו ויקחו לתרור ומי עסקו לאיש אשר ידבנו ליבו ותיקחו אסטרומוסי. So we learned in the morning there are three levels of Turma over here. ויקחו לתרומו נאמבר 1, מאיס כל איש אשר ידבנו לי ותיקחו אס תרומוסי נאמבר 2. And then the Torah says it again, the word תרומה וזה איס התרומה אשר תיקחו מאיתם. And this is the Turma, the contribution that you have to take from them. And what is the contribution? Is זוב, כסף ונחשס, גולד, סילבר וקופר. רש"י, what is ויקחו לי? לי is to my name, Rashi explains, Turma is something that someone separates from their money, a free will contribution for me. Rashi says, Yidvenu libo lo shen nedovo, lo shen rotsin toiv, nedovo, which is an expression of good will. Tikhu es turmosi, there are three different types of turmas, according to the simple interpretation, achas turmas bekala gulgoles, Three selected contributions are indicated here. One is the contribution of a beka, beka per head. What is beka? Which is half of the holy, holy type shekel, half, she, half a shekel. From which the, based, the basis were made, the adonim, as explained in Parshas Eli Pikudei. Another is the contribution for the altar, a beka per head which was put in the collection boxes to buy from the money communal sacrifices. And another is contribution for the dwelling, which was each one's personal donation. The 13 items mentioned in this passage were all required for the contribution of the dwelling or for the priest uh, garments, as you will see, when you check carefully. So we, will, we are going to see 13 items. Each, each person, they all brought free will contributions, each person giving according to, to his generosity, except for the silver, which for the main part was brought by everyone equally in the form of half a shekel per person. So certain things that were a free will contribution, certain, certain things were mandatory. And we do not find the entire construction of the dwelling that more silver was required. As it says, the silver from those of the community who were counted a beka weight per head, and the rest of the silver that was brought here as a free will contribution was made into service utensils. So it's made into service utensils. The clay shows. So it says, and then we're going on to number four. Aquamarine, purple and scarlet wool, linen and goat's hair. Red dyed rams, skins, tachash, which was unique in a unique animal that existed in the time of Beis HaMikdash, Tachash, uh, skins, and pine wood. Rashi says, what is Tcheles? Wool dyed with the blood of the Chilozen. The blood of the Chilozen, the color of which is greenish-bluish, greenish-bluish color. Vargomen, and what is Argomen? Wood dyed with a type of a dye called Argomen. A deep, red, uh, or a deep red or purple color, Radak and uh, Rambam, speaking about the different uh, colors of it. Shemen Lamoir, but regarding the goats here, it says, Unculus translate Umeize, that which comes from goats and not the goats themselves. Okay? Shemen Lamoir. Meudomim, they were dyed red after tanning. Tchoshim, Rashi tells us, a type of an animal and is existed at that time. It was multicolored and therefore translates as goino, meaning that it rejoices and prides himself in the various colors. Vatsishitim, pine wood, where did they have fine pine wood in the desert? So it says that Yaakov Avinu planted before and they brought it with them, they brought it from its time. 
Shem and Lamoyer was oil for the light, clear olive oil, which to light up the lamp uh, regularly. Shem and Lamoyer was sung to Shem and Mishcho, Victor Sassam Avni Shoyam, then they had the Shoyam stones for the incest uh, stone, for the inset stones, for the eff effort, and for the breastplate. So you've got to go, so we'll continue some other time.